If you're watching this video, you've probably played Tetris before. You're likely familiar with the basic mechanics of the game, the dropping puzzle pieces, the music, and the incredible dopamine rush you get when you clear several lines. However, I can guarantee the one thing that is different between almost everybody is what version they are most familiar with. The best-selling version is on Game Boy, but there's also Tetris DS, Tetris 3D, Tetris 64, Tetris 99, Puyo Puyo Tetris, Tetris Effect, two different Tetri on the NES, and even just Tetris 2. What's even crazier than the entire series, though, is the amount of times it's changed publishers. All of these companies have at one point published variations of Tetris for numerous platforms since the original game was created. Now, there's a very complicated history behind the rights and the origin of the game, but I'm not really here to explain all that. What I am here to talk about is a brief period of time when EA held the license. Mobile gaming has never had a great rep, and especially today, it's not really hard to see why. A lot of games are designed to constantly take money from you any chance they get, with cooldown meters and timers. It feels like the transactions take precedence over gameplay. Sure, I get people gotta get paid, but I at least want to feel like I'm actually partaking in some kind of fun experience. It wasn't always like this, though. Early mobile games were designed more like traditional video games. The only problem is controls weren't replicated very well. I mean, you were trying to take this and fit it onto this. But somewhere in between the clunky games and the timer simulator of today, we had this interesting period where games utilized technology of the smartphone in unique ways. They were also better at taking existing console games and redefining how they could work with the touchscreen. And that's where Tetris Blitz comes in. In regular Tetris, as the blocks drop, you normally play this kind of delicate stacking game where you try to fit all the puzzle pieces in a way that nets you the most points. There's a small sense of urgency, especially once your stack starts to get closer and closer to the top and the rate at which they drop increases, but for the most part, the game is designed to go on for as long as possible while you try to get your highest score. What makes Tetris Blitz different is mainly two things, the clock and the block. Uh, placement. Imagine if you boiled down the original Tetris to scoring, but now as fast as possible. When the blocks fall, you get a choice of about four preset locations. If you don't like any, you can simply cycle through a few options, but ultimately, the goal is to stack neatly and maximize your points for the two minute round. Does this simplify the Tetris formula? Absolutely, but as a spin-off for mobile phones, it's simplified in a way that complements the device it's being played on. In my opinion, traditional Tetris is not nearly as fun to play on a phone with normal controls the same way Tetris Blitz would not be nearly as fun as if it was played with a controller. Because of the simplicity, it makes for a different experience, one to exist alongside the original, not replace it. You're constantly dropping blocks and sometimes even in places that you normally wouldn't just so you can snag a few extra points, or trigger one of the coolest modes in the game, Frenzy Mode. If you net enough combos in a row, you can trigger Frenzy Mode. The game will have your blocks falling onto an incoming wall from the bottom of the screen, and this is your chance to score even more points. The longer you can keep the chain going, the longer you can increase your score. At the end of a round, you can use a finisher, a power-up designed to clear a few extra rows and squeeze out just a few more points. These could be unlocked with microtransactions, but could also be earned in-game without much issue from what I remember. And that's because this game came out in 2013 the same year as GTA 5, Grown Ups 2, and Rap God. I used to play this game a lot in my high school. Study hall, lunchtime, on the bus. I definitely got my money's worth, and I never even spent a penny on the game. Other games would come and go on my phone, but every year or so, I would find myself re-downloading Tetris Blitz and returning to it for a time. That is until one day in 2020, when I booted up the game to see this. Hello Blitzers. We've had an amazing journey with you so far, but sadly, it's time to say goodbye. As of April 21st, 2020, EA's Tetris Blitz app will be retired and no longer be available to play. While it was never really confirmed, it seems EA had lost the Tetris license around this time, as its other Tetris app based on the original game also displayed a similar and disappointing message. To make things worse, the game was patched, requiring the internet to run, meaning even if you wanted to play the game offline, there was no way you were getting past this screen. I find it really frustrating to live in the modern world of gaming, where things that could work offline without issue are so often tied to expiration dates from servers 
or the license of their IP holders. It's because of this that Tetris Blitz is unfortunately dead and you can no longer play it. Until somebody found a glitch where they were able to bypass the screen by accepting the terms of service online, then immediately disabling the internet on their phone. We were finally in until EA patched it. On iOS. Thankfully, the glitch still works on the Android version, which has been backed up via the Internet Archive, and you can even run it from an Android emulator. Tetris. So once again, an experience that could have been lost forever was saved by people who were determined to figure out a way of preserving it, even if it is just another version of Tetris. If you haven't played it before, I seriously recommend giving it a try. I returned to it while making this video, and I had a blast firing it back up again. If you have any stories about a lost game from years gone past, I'd be interested in hearing about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.